Good morning everyone, welcome back. I am going to be filming a bonus video today. I'm trying to go back to my normal schedule of filming on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I figured I would actually sit down and do a plan with me today so you can kind of see how everything fits together in my world. I am filming in a different spot today. I finally got my craft room cleaned out so I figured I would give it a shot of filming in here because then I could actually leave things set up and not have to set up and take down. Now that being said, as soon as I pressed play my neighbors decided to crank their music. So we live in a house, but the entire wall behind me is French doors and a window. There's no soundproofing. So if you hear noise, I apologize. I'm actually using my DSLR and a mic that's connected in, hoping to kind of maybe cut down on some of that, but no guarantees. So to get started, today is the 21st. So next week is week four. So usually I go ahead and pull out these pages so I don't have to write inside my planner. And I do clip the holes so I can take them in and out easier. You may have seen that before, but I figured I would mention it. Let's pull that out of the way. All right, so the other thing I have here is my Momentum Planner. This is this week or this coming week. They have that highlighted on this page. And then this page over here is the monthly page where I tentatively broke things down. So I'm going to be starting in both of these. And the other thing I will be using to start out with is my phone because I keep my calendar on here. So let me get next week pulled up here. All right, I usually work off of something a little bit larger, but this will work. You will see, if you look at my calendar, I have things in many different colors. I don't have all the calendars available to me showing because we do have quite a few office calendars, but I do have the main office calendar, the gray, is the time blocking that I had mentioned in a previous video. So I have my creative blocks time mapped out. The purple is my actual office calendar, which is what my assistant can see. And the green is my personal calendar. So again, time blocking, I have time blocked out my workout, my morning routine, drive time, and then in the evening again as well. And then the yellow is important to me, maybe not to anybody else, but that's the West Coast Swing dancing calendar for San Diego. So I kind of know what's going on in the evening and if there's anything that I want to go to. So that's kind of how the calendars work. So I'm gonna put this off to the side where I can see it. Other thing, coffee. Still working on my first cup. I don't drink it very fast and I've actually already reheated it once. So I may have to go do that again. So the first thing I like to do is let me pull this out to make it easier to work. On the Momentum Planner, the first thing I write on each of the days is my workout. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And it can change, so I'm usually fairly generic about it. But because it's important to me, that's usually the first thing I want to pencil in. Slide this over. So I'm going to transfer over my monthly objectives. And I have originally, I don't know if it's still on camera, it is kind of, add a thousand YouTube subscribers. I'm not going to be able to add that, but to be honest with you, that's what I would like to get to, given YouTube's new changes that they've made. As of the recording of this video, I think I've finally gotten across 800. I think it might be around 820 something, but I am short of the 4,000 watch hours by about, I think a thousand, maybe just under 2,000. I need to go back and look and see. The deadline is February 20th. You'll actually see later on, I have made a note of that. And it's one of those, I'm so close, but so far I'm gonna go ahead and try and get there. I have to say thank you so much, everybody in the planner community. Everybody is really banded together. I'm trying to do my part as well, watching videos. I did discover, supposedly, if you watch things on two times speed, that still counts as watch time. They don't care how quickly you watch it, just the amount of time that it's covering as far as video time goes. So that's a hint if you're trying to help people out but don't want to spend like an actual 20 minutes watching a 20 minute video. You're just trying to either rewatch or watch something to help someone. Put it on two times speed and do that instead of skipping around because the skipping doesn't count as watch time but watching it more quickly does. So we'll see. They may change that but for now, I think as far as I know, that's how it's working. So, and then the big project I'm working on right now is pre-hire onboarding. And I am usually all over the place on these things. So, actually, because I don't need those right now, I'm gonna put those back there. So this is this week. 
let's see. So what I have been doing that's been working as far as the pre-hire onboarding is I've decided to create job packets and those job slash interview packets contain the interview evaluation, um, job description. So whoever's doing the interviewing can actually tell the person about the job, what's required. We have a question of can you fulfill the requirements of this job, but yet they don't have the actual job description that includes things like going up and down stairs and how much you have to talk on the phone and being able to type and that sort of thing. So I've included that, the actual interview questions, and then anything else that might be needed. So for example, our maintenance techs, we have a skills checklist. So we don't have to sit and try and think what all of the maintenance skills do we want to see if you have. We can actually just run down the list and check things off. So I'm putting those together. Thus far, I have the community manager packet. That was my demo packet or the first one I was working on. And it actually, we used it for last round of interviewing and it worked really well. So I'm going to continue making those. So before I schedule out what I'm doing this week, let me take a look and see what my appointments are. So Wednesday, I have a webinar and I believe that's about 11 a.m. Thursday, I have a work lunch. Now on this, I don't always write down times because that's going to be in my actual daily planner. This is just a holding spot. So I know I have some appointment that's going to take away from my time to actually work on tasks. So that's all that that is. 23rd, I have one-on-ones with my employees in the afternoon. Thankfully this week actually looks fairly uneventful, which is good. So one of my business partners is out of town, so I'm going to be handling probably a lot of things that I probably usually don't. So this week I want to finish the job packet for maintenance. I have a leasing agent that I want to work on and the maintenance coordinator. So, and I'm not kidding when I say I jump all over the place. Tuesday, I just remembered is payroll day. So that's going to take a chunk of time out of what I have available. So essentially what I've done is I've transferred these two items from this week over to this week's projects. Um, I guess I can add here scheduled events. And these I usually only use for appointments. And I know, like I said, these are duplications, but this is a visual representation of time out of my day that I don't have available. All right. So we are getting towards the end of the week. Other than this, the only things I have that I'm working on, I think will be the normal recurring tasks that I have. So I think here, Monday, I wanna wrap up the job hiring packet for maintenance. Tuesday, I wanna work on the job hiring packet for leasing. That reminds me, I need to make one of my employees a supervisor for everybody. So while I'm gone, she can approve and adjust hours. Uh, Wednesday, I work from home. So Thursday. Thursday, I'm going to work on the job hiring packet for the maintenance coordinator. Okay. So essentially all I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm moving forward my projects. As far as adding a thousand YouTube subscribers, or in this case, getting to a thousand YouTube subscribers this month, actually adding a thousand was the quarter one objective. Monthly was adding 300, I just noticed. So I actually transferred the wrong thing. I was looking at the wrong line. Oops. The pre-hire onboarding, this was interviews and job postings. So essentially, once I've finished these job hiring packets, the other thing I need to go in and put in there is the, well, I don't know that I'm gonna include it in the job hiring packet because this packet is something that we print off for each person that we are interviewing. I don't need to print off the job description each time, but because part of the job hiring packet is the job description and I'm revising that, I will actually be going back in and creating a job posting off of that job description, so. Anyway, probably more information you need to know about what I do, but that's how I do. <laughs> that's the order I'm doing everything in. So that will probably be something I work on uh, later this week or beginning of next week once I get these packets finished. I'm going to leave Friday open just so I have a chance to get caught up on whatever I might not have gotten caught up on. Now, this... You're gonna just see me stop and you're not gonna see it come into play again, um, except for the fact that I'm going to write down payroll um, in here. 
just because that's a big thing for me and I usually like to know what I have coming up as far as the big items in my personal everyday carry. This actually I refer to every single day because I do my work planner pages on a daily basis. So the night before I sit down, pull this out, look at OmniFocus and see what it is that I have as a recurring task. I look at the weekly momentum planner and see what I had planned to work on that next day. And I wrote, write all of that down along with any appointments that I have. I'm actually going to be doing like a daily plan with me. This is more of a weekly plan with me, uh, just so you can kind of see how that all flows together. But just so you know, ahead of time, that's where this comes into play. So I'm actually going to put this away and bring out everything else. If I can get it to close. There we go. I have a happy planner ruler in here and I will tell you it doesn't quite slide on the Martha Stewart rings very well. So I may actually go look and see about putting in happy planner rings. Not sure yet. All right, set that aside. Okay, let's work on my everyday carry. So I think I've mentioned in a previous video, but just so you know, these are inserts I've created. I've created them in InDesign. I merged in all the dates and anything you see pre-printed on here. I do have a video on how that works. So if you are interested in how I did it, please go watch that video and I will actually try to remember to link that down below. On the back side of the week is where I have the menu and the grocery list. So usually I do the menu planning and the grocery list on Saturday or Sunday, whatever day I'm going grocery shopping. That was yesterday. So that's why this is already filled in and checked off. These are just suggestions. Most of this stuff is in the freezer. So I try not to pull it out unless I know we're getting ready to eat it. So that way if something changes, I don't have to worry about the fact that we didn't eat it and I'm wasting food. So here I'm going to write down what zone we're in. Let me pull this forward because I have a lot of this information in here. Look at the month. This is zone four. And I should have these memorized by now, but I don't. Master bedroom. And bath, which is laughable because we actually only have one bathroom in our house. <laughs> but you know, whatever. The reason I'm writing this down is just as a reminder, I am trying to declutter our house using these zones. And I had kind of an order that I was doing these in. I wrote it down someplace. I think it might've been in the momentum planner or somewhere where I was doing my goal setting. And I had certain rooms that I was going to be focusing on for a month or two at a time. So let me see if I can find that for you. Okay. <laughs> Little did I know, it's actually here in my everyday carry. I believe I broke this down in one of my previous videos, but let me just back up really quick. So these are my goals for 2018. And what I did is I broke a few of them down into smaller projects. So I have my goal, the result that I'm looking for, why it's important, my progress goals, because most of these I'm not gonna be doing all at one time. And then the actions and tasks that I'm going to perform in order to get there. So here's the goal. Number two, clearing surface clutter. So my goal is surface clutter is minimized and intentional, resulting in a peaceful house. I noticed that when the surfaces are cluttered, it actually kind of stresses me out a little bit. Plus the fact it's easier to keep clean and I don't have to scramble when I have somebody come to clean my house <laughs> to make sure she has the surface available to her to be cleaned. So here are my progress goals. So as I said, I was focusing on rooms and wanted to have it done by a specific date. So living room by February, bedroom by April, bathroom by May, kitchen by July, craft room by October. Now, a little bit of a cheater thing. I actually focused really hard this weekend on my craft room. So yes, I am going to be spending from August to the end of October focusing in more on this and it'll probably be more on going through individual areas one at a time and giving away what I don't need. However, I did do a bunch of that this weekend, got a jump start so I can actually work in here again because this was one of those rooms where you just kind of dump stuff in when you have company coming over and and you could hardly walk in it. Couldn't find anything. Things were just falling over all over the place. And so uh, it's a lot better. If you look on Instagram, I have a couple of pictures. I think I had, if you look quickly, <laughs> um, you might be able to see kind of a, a video walkthrough in my Instagram stories. It is still packed in here. I will not lie, but it's better than it was. So Anyway, this is what I was referring to by the fact that I had broken things down. So the idea was that on Wednesdays when I work from home, I would actually focus on my progress goal, progress goal room, 
try saying that five times fast. And then the rest of the days I would spend about 15 minutes working in the zone for that month. So hopefully between those two things, I would actually manage to get things kind of cleared out and quieted by the end of the year. So that was a very long story about a very short thing. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let me walk you through how I set up my week. So the first thing I do as I did in the momentum planner is I write down my workouts. Right now I'm working through Beachbody as I have been probably for the last year and I switch around workouts. I'm working through size right now, which is a hip hop dance workout. So once I get back from my trip in February, then I'm gonna go back to Insanity Max 30 which I have really been, in, I enjoyed it for the few times that I did it, but it was just a little too much at the time. Just not physically so much, it's just mentally. Like I needed something that was fun and that I wasn't like regretting doing, not regretting, needed something I wasn't looking forward to doing. All right, so just because I don't remember where I left off this week, jump back in the pocket. That was the last one I did, which I actually might repeat because that was the first time I had done that one. So write that. Now you may or may not be able to see on the camera, but I actually had pre-printed in workouts um, that was the Insanity Max and I whited them out because I changed my mind because I didn't want to reprint these inserts. So I don't think I'm going to put the exercises in going forward. I don't mind writing them in. It doesn't take that long. That way if I change my mind, um, it's not that big of a deal. Now, I think the way that size is supposed to work, you're actually supposed to spend an entire week learning the choreography and everything, but eh, it's not like I'm planning on performing this anywhere, so not that big of a deal. All right, so I do use mild liners when I'm setting up my daily pages. I have a pink one in here. I don't often use it. It's a little too fluorescent for my tastes, but purple is kind of like a personal, so mainly I just use it to make a little checkbox for my exercise. Now I am using regular copy paper for my inserts. So you'll see that you can kind of sort of see a little bit of a shadowing or a tiny bit of a bleed through. To be honest, I don't keep these. These are not something that I'm keeping for posterity. So it doesn't really matter to me if it bleeds through. I, I just, it doesn't bother me. So your mileage might vary, but I would rather have thinner inserts and not have to worry about um, trying to fit everything in. So. From here, I write down headers for home and work, except for Wednesdays and the weekends where I just write home. Or unless I mess up <laughs> and write it on the wrong day, which I have been known to do. Now you'll notice up here in the upper corner, I have the Bible study for the day from the liturgical year Bible study and um, God and Glam, which is through Paper and Glam. She's here on YouTube. She divided up the Bible study, but these are the verses for the week. So she's the one who assigned them to specific days. That's why I say it's from both. All right. So now I just run through and highlight these in gray just so they stand out. All right, so the other two colors that are left, blue is for work, green is for home. So you'll see that I use those to, again, create little check boxes. So I'm gonna flip over here, my everyday carry. We'll jump to routines. So this is the page that I'm referencing. So I have my weekly routine and I'm going to be transferring this information onto my daily pages. So if you're wondering where that comes from, that would be where. So first day I have recurring things is Wednesday. This Wednesday is a little different. Normally I would be having my house cleaned, but we had to switch dates around so she's not coming till next week. So then I try and do a home blessing, which means I try and at least do a little bit of vacuuming, a little bit of dusting, something just to kind of keep it up. Desk day, which if you pull this forward a little bit. I actually have a note here about what that is. Going through inboxes, recycling and shredding unneeded paper, filing papers, updating my budget, and then cleaning out my purse. So that's usually what desk day entails, at least for me. I try and do a little bit of laundry. So whether that's doing sheets and towels and cleaning cloths or putting away laundry, because my husband usually is the one who does the laundry. I am fine with that. I am not 
somebody who loves laundry and we've just kind of divided up the tasks based on what we don't mind doing. So I generally keep the house fairly clean. He and I split dinners. Depends on who feels like cooking or doesn't that night. But I usually am the one who does the meal planning and kind of keeps the kitchen clean, that sort of stuff. He does the trash in the laundry. And then, like I said, he does part of the cooking as well because he likes to grill and smoke meat. So he usually cooks on the weekends and I cook during the middle of the week. So, and then this is also filming and writing day. I'm trying to get back into blogging. That has not yet happened, but that's okay. All right, so I have room here at the bottom to add stuff. Usually if I have errands, then I'll go ahead and make a note about the fact, you know, make an errands category and write something in. Um, just so you can see what that looks like. You can see here errands, and then I have them listed underneath back in. All right. I've <laughs> lost my place. All right. So let's go to Saturday. Saturday is when I usually do my weekly review slash planning. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about the weekly review with GTD. Calling it a weekly review did not resonate with me at all. So when I think of it as weekly planning, which is this, and I'm usually looking back through the last week also once I get stuff set up to see if there's anything I still need to carry forward. That is my weekly review. But if I'm thinking of it as a planning session, I don't have such a mental block against it. I don't know what it is, but I also clean out the fridge and I try and do that before I do the meal planning. So that way I know kind of what we have in there as far as leftovers and things that needs to be things that need to be eaten up or if there's any anything under frosted that we didn't end up using, that sort of thing. So I can kind of work that in. Errand day, laundry. Again, this is usually something my husband does, but sometimes I'll throw stuff in. And then this is kind of a second chance filming writing day. If there's anything specific around the house that I want to do, I will put that in later. But this, again, usually we'll add that sort of stuff in on, on that day or the night before. I'm not going to write it in. This is me just basically setting up the week so I know what's going on. All right, Sundays. You should go to church at 10.15, so I'll go ahead and write that in. And it's funny, the meal kitchen prep is actually more wishful thinking. I actually wrote this out of order. Usually grocery shopping is first. For some reason, I never really get around to it. Like the ideal thing would be to come in and be like, oh, I need onions for the potato kielbasa skillet and the pork chops. Let me slice all that up now. But if I do that, then it also means I'm somewhat committed to those meals and I don't want anything to go bad just because I cut it up or sliced it or whatever. So I guess there's a reason I don't do it, but the meal kitchen prep is also a little bit about making sure that the kitchen is clean, that I've run all the dishes through the dishwasher that have been left over from you know Friday or Saturday when we just haven't been doing a whole lot around the house and also making sure that I've washed any hand wash dishes, that sort of thing. So I was just making sure everything's kind of ready to go for the week. So errand day, more laundry if needed, and there we go. All right, so add that in. Now, I don't think, if I remember correctly, that I had any personal appointments. I think most everything was work. I will add work appointments in here just so I know I need to be someplace, but like the one-on-ones that are routine thing that happen, um, I usually don't write that in necessarily. It's actual appointments that need to go in here that I add. All right, so I have the Appfolio Connect. Oh, Wednesday, it's a webinar. And the webinar is related to vlogging, so it's not actually work. It's more sort of fun, but um, that's actually through Vlog Like a Boss. Amy was Schmittauer, now Landino. She's the one that's hosting it, so I went ahead and signed up. I really like her approach to YouTube and vlogging and that sort of thing. All right, so like I said, there's not a whole lot going on this week appointment-wise. There are some weeks when I'm just like, I don't know when I'm going to get anything done because <laughs> I'm in meetings all the time, so it's kind of nice, like I said, that I don't have a lot going on. All right, so we have appointments in. I have my recurring tasks in. Let me pull this forward. I do have like my routines as far as review in here. I very rarely refer to this. So I have scheduled fitness, weekly routine, zone cleaning tasks. I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, so I check momentum planner and that reminded me I have payroll on Tuesday. 
Now, the reason I put this in here is because it does entail a lot of things. Um, reminding employees that I need their time card changes, calculating bonuses, making sure that everybody has all of their time in. So it usually is a half day process or something like that. So I need to remember that I need to be not dilly-dallying around at home. I actually need to get into the office so that I can get it done. Or if for some reason I am at home for an extended period of time, I can be working on a lot of it from the house. I think that's pretty much everything. Let me, one other place I will check. Usually these are synced, but sometimes they are not, is my monthly calendar. Yep. Oh, you know, the other thing I noticed is I didn't add in, when I redid all of my monthlies, I actually didn't put in my payday stickers. So, because this is random. Gonna make a note of that for myself. So I'll do that later today. Cause I will have to go find the stickers and pull them out there in the other room. And I'm not gonna make you sit <laughs> while I go and do that. Okay, so that I think is everything for my everyday carry. Some days or some weeks this takes longer than others, but this is just me kind of getting prepped, knowing what's coming up for the week, knowing what appointments I have, generally what recurring tasks I have, and then the night before I'll go in and if I need to add something to a to-do list, I will go ahead and do that. But this is where I start. So my week is at least set up. So I will put these back in. And just as a reminder, if I have any to-dos, that I want to be working on. Like, I'm like, oh, I have time. What should I work on? This is the list that I pull from. So this is my personal task list. I have an equivalent one at the office that I can look at and use. All right, so that is how I get my week set up. I have not completed my tracker. That's pretty much it. Sometimes I do some of these things in the morning. So even though it says it's an evening routine item, I will go ahead and check it off. Um, oh, I did a quiet time this morning, but these were not workout days. So as you can see, I had a week where I didn't actually fill anything in. I'm trying to get better about it and remembering to check everything off. All right, so that is everything pretty much updated in my everyday carry. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this off to the side and pull forward my Erin Condren. Now, this is what I am currently using as a social media slash YouTube planner. And let me kind of show you my journey. Cause originally I started out using it as like a weekly version of my planner. I had kept this open at home. So my husband would kind of know what was going on with me. So I'll just kind of flip through a little bit so you can see what I was doing. This was a very similar or almost a duplicate of how the planner spot was using her Erin Condren planner. But I just really got tired of keeping up two different planners as far as duplicating information. So you'll kind of see here shortly, I skipped a week, got lazy and didn't even bother putting in stickers. And then it stopped. So what I decided to do is go ahead and use this, as I said, as my YouTube slash social media planner. So I went back and I added in the videos when they, you know, were uploaded just so I had a record of that. I was actually keeping that in this insert in my everyday carry. This probably looks familiar if you've watched any of my videos before. It was basically just when things were posted and I had sticky notes just as kind of a start of a plan. But I, I don't know, for whatever reason, this just isn't kind of working for me. So I figured I would start using this. So October, November, you can see I was a little sporadic in posting. December, I actually think I had this idea. So you can see I had written some things in. I actually went back and whited out the stuff that didn't get posted. I really want this to be a record of what actually went up and got posted. All right, so we are now in January. So this is how I'm starting to use it. I have a couple of stickers from the planner spot. I actually really love her stuff. It's very minimalistic, but pretty. Anyway, I have the videos I've already recorded. I have sticky notes for the ones that I'm thinking about doing. Um, noted that I need to pre-schedule six videos. The monetization deadline is next month. So this is February. You'll see I have a deadline written in 1K subs, 4K hours of watch time. Videos that I'm planning to do, hopefully. I've actually started planning into March and that's kind of where I've left off. So going into the weekly, 
this isn't entirely, I mean, I was just kind of backfilling a little bit for this week. So Wednesday or Tuesday nights, we got the lovely news about the YouTube changes. So Wednesday, panic mode, film all the videos. I was originally planning going forward after December to just upload one video a week. Obviously, if I want to catch up with subscribers and watch time, I need to offer you guys content. I realized this. And to be honest, it was a little weird. I kind of missed doing two videos a week. So it wasn't that big of a deal for me to jump back into the two videos. I think I filmed three or four videos on Wednesday and there were ones I was already kind of planning on doing anyway, so it wasn't too big of a stretch. So essentially the setup is the top box is when I'm uploading or scheduling videos. Middle box is filming, making a note of what I'm filming when. Originally I'd called this GTD review weekly plan with me, but I think I'm going to do a separate one. This is just the weekly review and I wanted to kind of give you a bonus video almost as a thank you for subscribing and watching. And also because I know I haven't really tied everything together in the Girl Boss Functional Planning series. I think this is more of like a wrap up for that series. Although the daily plan with me will probably be the final wrap up. Just so you see literally start to beginning how I do planning. And this isn't, you know, steps I go through every single time, but it takes you from when I started to where I am now. And everything I've talked with you about along the way through that series, that all gets wrapped into all my daily planning and all my weekly planning. So as I mentioned, top is a schedule for upload Uploading, middle is a schedule for filming, and then the bottom one is a schedule for editing. So that's this week. This is next week. These are stickers uh, from the planner spot. I think they're her printable ones. I'm just sticking these here kind of as a reminder of when I want to do certain things. Usually videos will be at Tuesdays and Thursdays, which means Monday and Wednesday I will be editing, sometimes on the weekend, depending on what I have going on and how far ahead I can get, um, especially when I have to do six videos for next month. Need to do some hustling. And then Wednesday I usually film and Saturday I usually film. Sometimes Sunday, because today is Sunday. But anyway, so that's kind of what the weekly part of this looks like. And this is something I will be setting up. I set this up yesterday and I'm only actually writing videos in as they've been uploaded or scheduled just so I have an accurate representation of what actually what happened when. So they'll somewhat be set up on the weekend and some of it filled in as we go. So that's my social media planner. I do want to get in to posting a little bit more on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I am toying with how I want to use that. I probably will start doing video announcements there just so you know when a new video has been released, but I also want to use it for updates. The one thing I'm really jealous about for people who have 10,000 or more subscribers is the ability for them to go in and actually do polls and have almost like non-video conversations with their viewers through the YouTube feed. So because I don't obviously have enough followers to do that or enough subscribers, I thought I might actually try doing that a little bit on Instagram. So asking questions, finding out what it is that you guys want to see from me, what videos you're interested in. As I mentioned, before, if I have said anything about this is something I've created and you want to see how I did it, I'm more than happy to show you. I have no problem showing you guys how to do something. I'm all about everybody knowing how to do something for themselves, but then also having the option that if they don't want to, don't have time, don't feel like it, then they can actually rely on somebody else to do it. That was kind of the whole premise eons ago when I started Modern Home Economics, is that even if you're not going to do it, it's always a good idea to know how to do it. Like, I may never change the oil in my car, but that's something I want to learn how to do. I conceptually know how to change a tire. Doesn't mean I want to do it when I get a flat tire. So there are certain things as an adult, it's a good thing to know. It's a good thing to know how to budget, how to cook. That doesn't mean you have to do it every single time, but if you need to know how, you know how to do it. So anyway, that's a little bit of a soapbox and diverting off of this plan with me, but that's the mindset behind where I come from when it comes to my outlook on life. I like to know how to do a wide variety of things <laughs> because I'm like, okay, I've learned it. What's next? I want to learn something new. Like, <laughs> I want to learn how to do woodworking. It's just something I want to sit down and learn someday. Someday. Anyway, I think that about wraps it up. So you kind of see what all I use. I have the social media planner. Um, I have my everyday carry. This is pretty much what I live in. My momentum planner. This is where I kind of set up my week for work. Between these three, this is kind of where I live on the weekends. I'm just trying to get things set up. Now, I may not reference, this I will reference pretty much every single day because I'm setting up my work dailies. This I'm only going to look at when I'm getting ready to do something for social media. I know it's here. Writing it down puts it in my brain. So it's not something I have to have open and looking at every single day, every minute of the day. Same thing with this. Writing it down puts it in my brain. So usually, even if I haven't looked at it, I will remember to do things that 
are on my list. Oh, that's the other thing. If you haven't been watching, gosh, I can't even think the name of her channel. I think it's Llamas Love Lettering, or at least I know that's the name of, okay, let me look it up. But she's been doing an everyday plan with me and she had a social media tracker that I was really interested in, Cindy. Cindy Gunturnt Baldo. I will actually link her channel down below as well. She's doing a plan with me every single day this month in January and she's working from her Erin Condren and she has a bullet journal that she's using. But she has a social media tracker that I actually really liked and I wanted to implement that here on this page. So you'll actually see, this is something I meant to, to mention, that I want to put on this page and start using this for tracking. So I wanna actually have goals, probably video goals, like how many per month or per, yeah, for the month or for the week, YouTube subscription goals, Instagram goals and blog goals, and then do a tracker down here so I can see, you know, did I do these things every single day? That's the other thing I'm playing with with this planner is I want to actually make it a little more functional. And like I said, I spent the money, but I don't wanna waste it. I'm thinking, if I continue doing something similar next year, I will actually probably just get the monthly deluxe planner, which has the, the months and then two note pages after and then a page similar to this before. So that may be what I do next year. We shall see. That's a long ways away. <laughs> Things may change between now and then. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it gives you a view into how I do my planning, the things that I'm referencing, the things that I'm looking at, how I'm setting up my week, but I'm not actually planning out every single day. I'm just giving myself a loose setup for what I'm doing, the direction I'm going in, and realizing that plans may change. But I like having a plan. The plan can change, but I like to have a general idea of where I'm going. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I would really appreciate clicking the subscribe button. And I'm going to wrap this up because this is going to be a very long video. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.